inequalities key part of this topic and there's always going to be questions on inequality so some properties to start off with how you can manipulate them uh, and this is just basically saying well you can add and subtract from both sides just like you can with a, an equation and the inequality will be preserved so if a is greater than b uh, we know that if we multiply by a positive number that inequality sign is not going to change but if we multiply by a negative number the sign will change and that's the old if you change the sign you change the sign reciprocals if you take the reciprocal of both sides then the inequality sign will change if you square now this one is important that they're positives we're talking about because it's not true with negatives but if you square both sides the inequality is preserved and this one here if a is greater than b and b is greater than c then logically a must be greater than c so inequalities are the same sign you can link or add them together however you want to look at it now if a is greater than b and c is greater than d then you could multiply again as long as they're positives of course because you multiply by a negative the sign will change you can multiply inequalities together and you can also add the inequalities together as well so if a is greater than b and c is greater than d then it would be true to say a plus c is greater than b plus d some things we can use when we're manipulating so the techniques to approaching these problems a really really common one is to pull everything to one side so rather than trying to prove x is greater than or equal to y try and prove x minus y is greater than or equal to zero because you sometimes a lot easier to show something's always positive or something's always negative start with this one goes back a very long time ago now prove that pq is less than or equal to p squared plus q squared over two so i'm going to pull everything to one side and i'm going to try and show that this well i'll have to show this one's always positive won't i to make this true because the reality is i've actually moved the pq to the right so we're saying that is greater than or equal to zero that's what i want to prove here well create an algebraic fraction and it comes out quite nicely the top of the fraction is a perfect square and we know squares are positive so brilliant i've got it i mean i've written it in the reverse to what they asked for but it's the same thing that's probably the quickest way now of course if they don't tell us which way to do it, we can do it any way we like if for some reason we wanted to do it by let's say i wanted to do it by contradiction i'll assume the reverse is true so pq is greater than p squared plus q squared on two but now that this is a fact i'm assuming it's a fact i can play with this inequality if i was to now multiply both sides by two move the two pq over i get this expression that zero is greater than p minus q squared but hang on p minus q squared must always be greater than zero because we know squares are positive there's my contradiction how can they both be negative and positive not possible so therefore pq must be less than or equal to it wouldn't be the way i'd approach it but just showing i mean you can use different techniques to show inequalities it's really up to you how you want to approach it okay another key fact start with a known result because if you know it's a true thing then you can move things around and it's still going to be true start with this one we're going to prove a squared plus b squared plus c squared is always greater than a b plus b c plus a c now i haven't mentioned where a b and c are positive start with a known result well i'm dealing with squares and i want to get a b and b c combinations so i guess the perfect square is a way of getting all these things out because when i expand it i will get terms that are squared and i will get terms that are multiplied by each other as well so it seems like a, a good spot to start and when i expand that out i'll get this expression a squared minus 2ab plus b squared is greater than zero okay but i could have done that with the a squared and the c squared i could have done it with the b squared plus the c squared now because all the inequalities are running in the same direction i could add these three inequalities together and i end up with 2a squared plus 2b squared plus 2c squared is greater than 2ab plus 2ac plus 2b squared divide everything by two and i've got the result that they want then said well hang on if a plus b plus c is equal to one prove that ab plus ac plus bc is less than one third 
So now I'm trying to get this expression. So I'm going to play with a squared plus b squared plus c squared because I've just proven this inequality here. So, all right. And remember, we know a plus b plus c squared minus 2ab plus ac plus bc is the same as a squared plus b squared plus c squared. I'm going to start with this. So therefore, because we just showed or proved that a squared plus b squared plus c squared is greater than that and a squared plus b squared plus c squared is the same as a plus b plus c squared, well, I'll just replace it in my uh, inequality that I just proved because this is now a known result. I can play with it. And I'll substitute in. Now if I substitute that in, I've now got that 3 lots of AB plus AC plus BC is less than A plus B plus C squared. But hang on, A plus B plus C is equal to 1. So that's less than 1. Divide both sides by 3, I have the result that they're looking for. So that's said 1 third. Now, once you've got an inequality and you know it to be true, you can substitute things into that inequality. Anything you like. So this is the next idea. We're going to substitute different expressions into something we know. I'm going to prove this one. One third of a plus b plus c is greater than or equal to the cube root of a, b, c. Now remember, we have shown this back in part a, I think it was. So a squared plus b squared plus c squared is greater than or equal to a, b plus a, c plus b, c. I will now move everything to the left. I know this to be a positive. You see, I need to create cubes somehow. You see how I end up with a, the cube root? So cubes got to be involved. And at this stage, I don't have cubes. How am I going to get cubes? Well, if I multiplied a squared by a, I'd get a cubed, b squared. So what I'm going to multiply is a plus b plus c, which we know is equal to 1, remember. If I expand that whole thing out, yes, it's a lot of work. But if I expand that whole thing out, and group terms together, I end up with this. a cubed plus b cubed plus c cubed minus 3abc. Well, that means I've got a third of a cubed plus b cubed plus c cubed is greater than or equal to abc. Wow, it's really close, but not quite the same. So we've now got a third of a cubed plus b cubed plus c cubed is greater than or equal to abc. I'm going to do a substitution which some of you might be a bit uncomfortable with, but remember what I said we can substitute in. I know this to be true. I can substitute in for a. Remember, all we said a is is a positive number. So I'm going to let a actually equal the cube root of a. And I'm going to let b equal the cube root of b. And I'm going to let c equal the cube root of c. And when I substitute in, a cubed now becomes a and b cubed becomes b, and c cubed becomes c, and on the right hand side, a is now the cube root of a, b is now the cube root of b, and c is now the cube root of c, and I have my result. If you feel more comfortable, let a equal x to the power of a third, they're just letters. So let a equal x to the power of a third, b equals y to the power of a third, c equals z to the power of a third, and then you'll get that expression, but instead of a plus b plus c, you'll have x and y and z, but they're just pro-numerals. Could just as easily have been a, b and c. This brings up, what we essentially have just proven is this idea. We've done it now. The very first question we proved it for the square root. That last one we proved for the cube root, but it is always true. And what we've just proven is the arithmetic mean is always greater than or equal to the geometric mean. And it's an idea we use quite frequently in inequality problems. Now, you don't have to prove it each time. You can just quote it. Unless that is what they're asking you to prove, of course. We're going to suppose that 1 plus x times 1 plus y times 1 plus z is equal to 8. And from that, we're going to prove that x times y times z is less than or equal to 1. I'm going to do it a couple of ways. The first way is very creative. The second way is very quick. But here's the first way. So 1 plus x times 1 plus y times 1 plus z is equal to 8. That's the known result. We're supposing this is correct. If I expand that all out, that's what I get. 1 plus x plus y and, and so on. I know that one third of x plus y plus z is greater than or equal to the cube root of x, y, z. Arithmetic mean is greater than or equal to geometric mean. Okay? So I can say that. So therefore, x plus y plus z is greater than or equal to three times the cube root of x, y, z. 
But I could now substitute in for x and y and z. So for x, I'm substituting in x, y. For y, I'm substituting in y, z. For z, I'm substituting in x, z. And this must also be true. So I now know that. Playing around with the right-hand side there, I'll rewrite it as the cube root of x, y, z all squared. Now, 1 plus x plus y plus z equals 8. But, remember we just said all these things were less than. So I could now substitute in. Remember we said, let's go back to it, the x plus y plus z is going to be greater than or equal to 3 times the cube root of x, y, z. And the x, y, y, z and so on. Well, if I substitute that in, I've now got this expression. 1 plus 3 times the cube root of x, y, z plus 3 times the cube root of x, y, z squared plus x, y, z is less than or equal to 8. Now, I don't know if you see it or not, but on the left-hand side, we now have something very nice. 1, 3, 3, 1. Just to highlight it, I'll rewrite x, y, z. x, y, z is the cube root of x, y, z cubed. I now have on the left-hand side 1 plus the cube root of x, y, z all cubed. And that's less than or equal to 8 which means 1 plus the cube root of x, y, z is less than or equal to 2, which means the cube root of x, y, z is less than or equal to 1, x, y, z is less than or equal to 1. Okay, that's a very creative way of getting the answer. I wouldn't suggest necessarily doing it that way. This way is a lot quicker, bigger. 1 plus x is greater than or equal to 2 root x. Now why did I look at that? Remember the three things we knew, 1 plus x times 1 plus y times 1 plus z? So I'm just looking at the 1 plus x. And any time I have two terms, two terms added together will always be greater than or equal to 2 times the square root of the two things multiplied together. So 1 plus x is always greater than or equal to 2 root x. And all I have to say is arithmetic means always greater than or equal to geometric mean. I can write it down. That's a result I'm allowed to use. Same is true with 1 plus y, same is true for 1 plus z. The inequality is all in the same direction. So I can multiply these three things together. And on the right hand side, we get eight times the square root of x, y, z. Which means eight, so we said one plus x times one plus y times one plus z is equal to eight. That's what we're assuming. So eight is greater than or equal to eight root x, y, z. Bingo, comes out a lot quicker. Manipulating the inequalities, using those techniques for the results we're allowed to use. Different question. We're going to prove that this wonderful sum of three fractions is in between these two other things. Okay, I'm going to use the arithmetic geometric mean idea again. So I'm going to go a plus b times 1 on a plus 1 on b. That's going to be greater than or equal to, well a plus b is greater than or equal to 2 root ab. And 1 on a plus 1 on b is greater than or equal to 2 root 1 on ab. Right? Two things added together will always be greater than or equal to 2 times the square root of those two things multiplied together. And then I've just done the same with the second parentheses. And that's equal to 4. So 1 plus a plus 1 on b will always be greater than or equal to 4 on a plus b. We're assuming a and b are positive numbers, so I, I can divide by a plus b. It's a positive number. The sign doesn't change. All right. Well, that's 1 on A plus 1 on B. Well, I could have done the same thing with 1 on B plus 1 on C. I could have done the same thing with 1 on A plus 1 on C. Inequalities are all in the same direction. I can add these three things together. So 2 on A plus 2 on B plus 2 on C is greater than or equal to 4 on A plus B plus 4 on B plus C plus 4 on A plus C. Divide both sides by 2. And we have got the right-hand side of what we want. So we've come up with that. So the question comes along, well, why did I start with that? Well, I knew I have to end up with just two terms. See the denominator in the middle? We've got a plus b, we've got b plus c, we've got a plus c. So I'm just grabbing two of them at a time to, to get that. Now, I'm going to go with three of them at a time to create this one on the left. Because it's got three things in the denominator. Three things at a time. Let's use the same idea. But this time, a plus b plus c, three things added together, will always be greater than or equal to three times the cube root of the three things multiplied together. Arithmetic mean, geometric mean. Well, they multiply together to give nine. Well, divide both sides by a plus b plus c, we now have the left-hand side, but ooh, not quite what we've got. Yeah, sure, I've shown that the very left is less than or equal to the very right, but how do I show that this is in the middle? I'm not quite there, but this is what I'll do. Because the middle, the denominators are not 
A, B and C. The denominators are A plus B, B plus C and A plus C. So I will replace those pronumerals. So A I'm going to replace with A plus B. B I'm going to replace with B plus C. And C I'm going to replace with A plus C. And when I substitute that in, this is what we get. So 1 on A plus B on 1 plus B plus C plus 1 on A plus C will be greater than or equal to 9 on 2 lots of A plus B plus C multiplied by 2. We now have the other side of the inequality that we wanted. So yep, that 2 on A plus B etc is trapped in between these two things. So that used a couple of the different ideas we just looked at. There was the uh, starting with a known result, there was uh, arithmetic mean, geometric mean, and replacing pronumerals with other pronumerals. If A, and this time they're actually reminding us, look, A is a positive number, okay? And it's gonna be real. Show that A plus one on A is greater than or equal to two. In other words, we're saying a number and its reciprocal when you add them together, will always be bigger than or equal to two. I, two things added together. Well, two things added together will be greater than or equal to two times the square root of two things multiplied together. Arithmetic mean, geometric mean. So I know straight away, bang, that comes out nicely. A plus one on A is greater than or equal to two. I could have done it a different way. I could have started with a known result. Now, the known result might not be immediately obvious to you, but here it is. The square root of a minus 1 on the square root of a squared is greater than or equal to 0. If I expand that out, I'll get a minus 2 plus 1 on a, move the 2 across, and there's our result. Just another way of, of getting that same result. Follow-up question. If A is positive, B is positive, and C is positive, we need to show this expression here. Now we've just shown that a number plus its reciprocal is greater than or equal to 2. Well that means B on A plus A on B is greater than or equal to 2. A number plus its reciprocal is greater than or equal to 2. Well why did I do that? Okay, well, I got denominators of A, B, and C, and in the numerators I also have A's and B's and C's. But I don't have an A on A or a B on B and a C on C there. So it seemed logical to go with B on A. But of course I could have picked any combination. C on A plus A on C will be greater than or equal to 2. C on B plus B on C is greater than or equal to 2. The inequalities are in the same direction. Add them together and I get this. Well if we tidy that up, that actually is our result. If you look at the two fractions with A as the denominator, I've got B plus C on the top and so on we have our result. But what about if we turn it upside down? Instead of being B plus C on A, it's A on B plus C, and so on and so on. This time we're going to show it's greater than or equal to 3 on 2. Okay. Remember, we just showed that. Hmm, so this is now known to be true. I can manipulate it. But the denominators are not A, B, and C anymore. They're now B plus C, C plus A, and A plus B. So I'll tell you what, let's replace them. Get what we want. I'm going to replace the A with B plus C, the B with A plus C, and the C with A plus B. Substitute in. This is what we now have. Woo, let's tidy all this up. The first fraction will be 2a, but then I'll also have plus b plus c, so that's just one, b plus c on b plus c. Same thing will happen in the next one, same thing will happen in the third one. So I now have 2a on b plus c, plus 2b on a plus c, plus 2c on a plus b, is greater than or equal to 3, divide both sides by 2, I've got the result. So the idea of, well, it's not quite what I want, let's make it look like what I want. What, the denominators didn't look like what I want, so I made it look like what I want. So I made it A was equal to B plus C, and, and so on. Let's go now through the last few years HSC questions to give you an idea of the sort of things that have been asked. For all non-negative real numbers, fancy way of saying we're dealing with positives. Oh, I suppose it could be zero as well. Square root of xy is less than or equal to x plus y two. And then a big hit, do not prove this. They're giving you a massive hint here. They're basically telling you, reminding you, arithmetic mean greater than or equal to geometric mean. That's essentially what they've written down there. Okay, using this fact, so you do not have a choice. You must use this fact somewhere in your proof. We're going to show this one, that the square root of ABC is less than or equal to A squared plus B squared plus 2C on 4. Hmm. The interesting thing here is we've got three things added together, but they want me to use the result where there's two things added together. 
So all right, I'm just going to get two of those things then and add them together so I can show, hey look, I've used this result. And the two things I chose were the two things that are squared. Seemed to be a sensible thing to do. A squared plus B squared on four then. So the two things added together will be greater than or equal to two times the square root of them multiplied together. So we get A squared B squared on 16. And just to highlight that I have used the fact that they are, so as I said, this is where I'm getting it from. So whoever's looking at my solutions, yeah, I, I've used what you asked me to use. Okay. Well, what happens on the right-hand side? It tidies up. I, well, I put the two in and then square rooted. I suppose I could have done the square root first and then multiply by two. It doesn't really matter. We end up with AB on two on the right-hand side. And, but now... I can say this, well, the fraction you're talking about is the fraction I've dealt with, but I have this other thing, c on 2. So that will be greater than or equal to a, b on 2 plus c on 2. Why? Well, because we said that the a squared plus b squared on 4 was greater than or equal to a, b on 2. Okay, two things added together. Well, that must be greater than or equal to 2 times the square root of those two things multiplied together which is the square root of A, B, C. And there's the result that they wanted us to, to show that particular year. It then said, using part A, but they did give you an out. They said, or otherwise. But when they say that sort of thing, yeah, it's probably a good idea to use part A. They say, this is going to be the easier way of doing it, probably. Show that for all non-negative, so A, B, C again, this expression, what did we just do? We just showed this. This is now a known result. The square root of ABC is less than or equal to A squared plus B squared plus 2C over 4. Somehow I've got to get this one there. All right. Well, hang on. A, B, and C. All right. Now, this is where it's going to look strange. But essentially what I've done is I've said, hmm, I'm going to let B equal C. And I'm going to let c equal b. So the b squared becomes c squared and the 2c becomes 2b. Uh, but I could have also done it by changing a into b and b into a. I'd still get the square root of a, b, c. I now have three inequalities. The inequality is all in the same direction so I can add them together. I've now got that 3 times the square root of a, b, c is less than or equal to our expression here. Well, divide both sides by 3, 2 cancels into the 4, we have the result that they wanted us to, to prove. It is given, and they got this, I, to this day I have no idea why they wrote it like that. That's just a really confusing way of saying the arithmetic mean is greater than the geometric mean. Because look at what they've done. They've just said, we've got these positive numbers, x1, x2. We're going to multiply them all together and divide it by the arithmetic mean. And that'll be less than or equal to 1. What? It's just arithmetic means greater than geometric mean, but it's a really confusing way of putting it. Maybe because it was the last question in the extension 2 paper, they said, oh, let's make it look hard. Suppose that a rectangular prism has dimensions A, B, and C. Surface area is S. Show that. A times B times C is less than or equal to the surface area divided by 6 or the power of 3 on 2. Now I'll just drew myself up a box A, B, and C just to get my head around what's happening here. Do I need the diagram? Maybe not. The surface area of this shape, because we need to get an expression for that, would be 2 outside of AB plus AC plus BC. There's an expression for the surface area. Now, this is arithmetic mean, geometric mean, but I'm putting it in the form that they've given me here. On the bottom, three things added together, AB plus AC plus BC, seem like a good thing to do because that surface area has got those three things added together. Always less than or equal to three times the cube root of them multiplied together. Let's play around with it. That becomes a squared b squared c squared is less than or equal to two lots of a b plus a c plus b c on six. Why on earth did I change it to two on six instead of being a third? Because remember s is two lots of. Now I can get s in there. So I have a squared b squared c squared less than or equal to s on six cubed. Well there we go. 
square root of both sides. A, B, C is less than or equal to S on 6 to the power of 3 on 2. Okay. Then, they said, using part 1, show that when that rectangular prism is a cube, it will have its maximum volume. In other words, maximum volume, because ABC is the volume of the cube, the maximum that's ever going to be would be S on 6 to the power of 3 on 2. So when it's a cube. So when it's a cube, we know that A equals B equals C. Now, ABC then is A cubed, if you like. So subbing that into this expression of S on 6 to the power of 3 on 2, you'll notice that is A cubed. Well, in other words, the volume, when A does equal B, does equal C, ABC is S on 6 to the power of 3 on 2. When the solid is a cube, the volume is at that maximum value of S on 6 uh, to the power of 3 on 2. Last year's, a bit earlier in the paper, question 12. Prove that for all real numbers x and y, where x squared plus y squared is not zero, x plus y squared on x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to two. All right, uh, well, let's look at this left-hand side. x plus y squared, uh, expand the top out, and I get one plus two xy on x squared plus y squared. So we've shown that this expression that they want on the left-hand side is one plus two xy on x squared plus y squared. So what I've done is I've looked at this second fraction and I've turned it upside down, which created two things added together. The x squared on 2xy plus the y squared on 2xy. So I can get the arithmetic mean geometric mean idea in there. Couldn't do it here. What was the point of going with 1? Because if I multiply by 1, I'm going to get the same thing anyway. I'm not going to achieve anything by doing it that way. So I just look at this fraction. Two things multiplied together doesn't help me. Flip it upside down, I've got two things added together. Okay. So it's going to be greater than or equal to 2 times the square root of those things multiplied together. And that turns out to be 1 when we play around with it. Okay, that means that 2xy, because now I'm going to flip it back, because remember, my expression was actually 2xy on that. So now I flip it back, and I've got the 2xy on the x squared plus y squared, but the inequality sign will now change, because when you take the reciprocal of both sides, the inequality sign changes. So I now know that to be true. Well, therefore, remember our expression that we're dealing with was 1 plus that fraction. So I add 1 to both sides, I've got that that equals 2, and that is what they wanted me to prove, that that was less than or equal to 2. Another way I could have done that, okay, the idea of pulling everything to one side. Make it one fraction, I've got that. Now, look at the top of the fraction when I tidy all that up. Minus x squared plus 2xy minus y squared. Well, hang on, that is the negative of x minus y squared. So that thing is always less than or equal to zero. Maybe that was a better way to go for this question. The idea of pulling everything. So not everything has to be proven with arithmetic mean and geometric mean. And so this is one where, yeah, a, a lot of people probably, let's just click back, probably did use, oh, how do I use arithmetic mean, geometric mean? Surely everything uses it. But no, not everything does. You can see that using the arithmetic mean, geometric mean idea was quite involved. If I go back to just that idea, hey, let's pull everything to one side and show it's, well, in this case, show it's always negative. That comes out a lot quicker. We get the result. We've got a handful of questions we'll try out of 2D.